Hey everyone, welcome back to my Let's Play of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. When we last left off, I believe we discovered by doing the summation... What the heck was it called? The summation... Expl... <laughs> so, uh, summation, something with the word that rhymed with summation. Explanation? I don't even remember. Uh, where basically we got to pit the jurors against each other to say, okay, these are all the reasons you guys already think this dude's guilty, but two of you contradict each other, and we did it twice. Um, and at that point, we found out two people have different uh, opinions, or I guess memories, on how this guy was stabbed, either sitting next to him or on the floor. And then two other people basically revealed that the fare for the night was for four pence a person. Twenty pence. Is that the currency? And so that means there were five people on the carriage, basically. And they were all claiming there were four. So we're trying to figure out about this mysterious fifth person who I think either hid in the little seat compartment or the people on the roof helped this person escape. But, like, technically there's not that many accomplices in this sort of thing in these games. So I have a feeling they just hid in the carriage under the seat. And then when everyone had cleared out, they just left. Um, I don't know how easy that is to do when it's then carried into a courtroom to be used as evidence. Like, I don't know if it was guarded or anything, but I think we're going to find out about this now. Um, we're re-talking to our witnesses to see uh, where the heck they lied to us. Uh, and we're going to hope that it's not that difficult to figure out. But I want to say thank you guys so much for your continued support of the series. I hope you're still having fun. I'm still having a blast. Um, I really love these games, so I'm excited to keep going. Um, and I appreciate all the new mechanisms they're bringing into the courtroom, right? Like, it, it's nice to see them still be able to uh, make the game fresh and new, even though there's been a fair amount of Ace Attorney games in the series. So, uh, anyways, I can gush about these games uh, for a while. So let's just jump back in um, and see if I remember these people's accents or voices. Uh, various misgivings. I, I only ca carried four passengers that night. I swear it, but, but um... Well, I for one was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. He fiddled us on the fair, he did. And then I saw that blood-curdling sight as well. It's all too much. I tell you, I saw McGilded stabbing that man. Everything I said before stands. Oh yes, yes, he just stabbed him. Yes, he did. I, I think so, yes. You think so? Man, this is not a time. Council, make sense of this for me, please. The phantom fifth passenger conjured into existence by my learned eastern friend never existed. The confusion has arisen from the coachman's sly little cousinage. Uh. Beppo, explain yourself. I'm t -t terribly sorry, guild master. The guild's fare is four pence across the board. You know that. Am I to understand that you've been overcharging your passengers by a penny a fare? It, it's uh, so cold, and the last run of the day is always half empty. You have been dishonest, coachman. You're a little bitch. Uh, I'm so sorry. You're a disgrace, Babbo. A disgrace! And your selfish actions have brought dishonor on the entire guild. If I may, sir. I had to pay ten pence on the bus just last week. What? Four passengers at five pence each is... Yes, twenty pence. I've done the arithmetic ten times already, but I just can't make the result come out differently. No, that figures. It's very, it's very simple math, Suzato. I don't know. Well, it would appear that one of the aforementioned misgivings has already been explained. So, counsel for the defense. Your cross-examination, if you please. So there wasn't a fifth person. We've already had the pleasure of a protracted summation examination today. Examination? Why couldn't I think of that? Is that what I said? No, I said explanation. Who even knows? I see you intend to continue the parlor games. Yeah, hopscotch, bitch. Absolutely. Tic-tac-toe over here, man! Alright, cross-examination. Various misgivings. Uh, I only carried four passengers that night, I swear it, but, um... see, should I be pressing them on all these? I don't remember if I'm gonna get in trouble or not, but let's do it anyways! Hold it! Hold it! So, there were only four passengers on your carriage, but you didn't charge them the stared four pence fare. Is that right? 
It's impossible to make the last run of the day pay. I was so co cold, there was all I could do to, to stop myself pa passing out. Uh, I'm getting chillblains just listening to you. Chillblains? What the heck is chill... Wait, ho hold on. Hold on. We're gonna educate the children today. What the heck is a chillblain? Let's Google it. Chillblain. Chillblains are the painful inflammation of small blood vessels in your skin that occur in response to repeated exposure to cold but not freezing air. Also known as pernio, chillblains can cause itching, red patches, swelling, and blistering on your hands and feet. Oh god, alright. Well, here we are. It was so terrible, so I wanted to give myself a pat on the back for even keeping the bus running. Doesn't it that a dedicated coachman did deserve an extra p -p penny p -p passenger? You're digging a deeper hole for yourself here. If only there had been a fifth passenger on the omnibus that night. Then we would have had another su- Then we would have had another suspect. Why can't I read? Yeah, shut up, Vampire Edgeworth. The life of one was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. Hold it! Hold it! Does that mean everyone on board that night paid five pence instead of four? Well, I paid five pence too, sir. And I just told you that I did. A fair, fair of five pence a month across the board! It's not something to be proud of. The so-called discrepancy my learned friend identified was nothing of this sort. Huh. Much like the phantom killer you so desperately needed, it's gone. Dead and buried. I'd have been happy if it had exi ever existed in the first place. He fiddled us on the ferry, did, and then I saw that blood card- I don't know why I'm reading that again. Uh, it's all too much. Hold it! How much? This blood-curdling sight. You mean the murder, I presume? Yes, sir. A loathsome sight. No one should have to witness the horror in the eyes of a man the moment his life is taken. Oh, well, not exactly, sir. I mean, I didn't actually see the exact moment the gent was stabbed. Good gracious! Really? We have another witness who did, however. The banker has already testified to it. Hmm. But Mr. First didn't actually see the point at which the victim was killed. That may turn out to be very significant. I heard the bank agent next to me take a sharp intake of breath, see? That's when I looked through the glass. That's... that's when I saw the horrible blade poking out from his belly, all covered in blood. Every time I see a knife now, I can't help screaming, even when I'm eating. Aw, oh, sorry, ma'am. I tell you, I saw McGill the seven that man everything I said before stands. Hold it! Hold it! So, you saw the defendant, Mr. McGill, is stabbing the victim, Mr. Mason, who is sitting next to him. That's... that's what I said, isn't it? Why do you seem hesitant, bro? It was bothering me before, this was. For just a brief moment, he hesitated before answering the question. Anyway, there was only the two of them inside the carriage, wasn't there? There has been much talk of a fifth passenger, but there's yet zero evidence. Then what are we wasting all this time for, eh? It's black and white. The man's guilty. Ah, are you lying to me, man? Something about Mr. Fairplay's testimony just jars with me. I wish I could work out what it was. Ah. Oh, yes, he stabbed him. Yes, he did. I think so. Yes. Hold it! Earlier, you testified that you saw the moment when the defendant allegedly stabbed the victim, didn't you? Oh, yes, yes, that's right. You said that the victim was on the floor and described the assailant holding the knife in an ice pick grip. I... I suppose... I might have, you know, yes, with the cart before the horse, maybe. What's this? Well, I'm quite sure about most of it. I was driving the horses when I heard a scream from the seats on the roof deck. Oh, I expect that was me, sir. I screamed like a little banshee. Then when I turned around, yes, yes, I saw it through the skylights. The gentleman was on the floor and the knife was sticking out of his midriff. 
That's right, yes, and the little fellow holding the handle was the f famous man. Yes. So in short, we didn't see the moment when the victim was actually stabbed at all. Really, Beppo? I, I really thought that I did, but... But when I go over it getting it in my head... No, I, I suppose I didn't actually see the precise moment of this stabbing, did I? Ah, Jesus! What? <laughs> what do you want, man? Uh, pursue. Excuse me. Excuse me. Bippity bam. Do you have something to say about that, Mr. Fairplay, or can you shut up? Now you listen to me. I know what you're thinking. You didn't really see the exact moment the fellow was stabbed. What are the chances of that? Eh? Are you asking me or telling me? He's getting flustered. I might be able to extract some new information from him if I answer him cleverly. Could he have just happened to see the exact moment the crime was committed? Some days are like that. No chance. Gotta make him mad, right? Well, it is a little hard to believe, certainly. Unless you spend your time peeping through a skylight on the top of an omnibus, that is. Peeping? I'm, I'm a respectable city banker, I'll have you know. And I know what I saw. I remember it as clear as the baller at day. It was a grim scene I don't mind telling you. Then tell us. Thank you, Mr. Fairplay. Oh, excuse me if I was getting a little hot under the collar there, my lord. I would ask you to supplement your testimony with a clear statement about what exactly you saw. Oh, I can do that, all right. I'll tell you just how grim it was. All right. Uh, do you think I'd forget the sight of those blood-soaked hands after that butcher stabbed that man? Butcher? Is he just calling him a butcher? Is he a is he butcher? I don't think he's a butcher, is he? Those blood-soaked hands. It's just one. I think. Do I have people that I could use as evidence? I don't think so. Okay, so I guess we're just going with weapons. Uh, a singular blood-soaked hand. Objection! Wrong, biatch! Blood-soaked hands. Well, I admit that soaked might be laying it on a little thick, but... But anyway, there was definitely blood all over them. Both of them were covered in it. Well, I'm very sorry to disagree, Mr. Fairplay, but that's more than a little peculiar. What? Here are the gloves worn by the defendant, Mr. McGilden, on the night in question. Oh, yes, right. And there certainly does appear to be a sizable dark-colored stain there. But, as I'm sure you can clearly see... It's only on the right-hand glove. Arr! Oh, don't chew on- man, you're gonna break your teeth. In short, Mr. Fairplay, you're blind. Your testimony is inconsistent. Yeah! But, but, no, that can't be right. Oh, Grandma's mad. So you're the liar here, then. Gah! Stop chewing on that, man, really. That's right, you were quite clear about it. You said, yeah, it was both hands. Err. Oh, God. Can everybody calm down? Mr. Fairplay, if your last statement was a lie, it calls your entire testimony into question. You say you saw the moment the victim was stabbed, but is that really the truth? Ah! I... well, I... Objection! Damn. It was a simple mistake. You can't justify accusing this man of lying. Yes, it was in both hands, it was only one. But the fact remains. The victim's blood was on the accused. Objection! It matters, bro. No, Mr. Fairplay categorically stated that he saw blood all over both hands. Which means there's a strong possibility that this witness was deliberately trying to mislead the court. Ah! Why? Why? I'm a city banker for pity's sake. My word should be the gold standard. I'm a gentleman, not some gutter snipe. Upsetting members of society don't prevaricate. He is claiming to have no reason to lie. But is that really the case? Mr. Naruhodo, if we had some evidence to explain why Mr. Fairplay might be lying, it could turn the tide in this trial completely. Something to show this man has a compelling reason to lie in his testimony. Uh...
I'm like, is the knife his? Mr. Fairplay? I mean, there's no M there. Oh, did I look at this yet? Uh, this portfolio must contain all sorts of secrets of London's gentry. Oh, there's gotta be a secret, right? Oh dear, do you really think we ought to look inside? Well, it's not as though we know any of London's gentry personally, is it? Apart from our great detective friend, perhaps. Actually, I wonder. I assure you, we will not find Mr. Sholm's name inside. Well, uh, let's see what we find. Girl, we gotta look at it. We're in a trial right now. Hold on, is there anything on the back? No? Alright. Gosh, it's crammed full of gentlemen's names, isn't it? Well, I suppose they're probably not all gentlemen at all, are they? Not at all, gentlemen? I did, did I read that right? Uh, well, after all, not everyone in this country is well off. Ah, oh, goodness! What is it? Look at this. Do you see the name here? Bruce Fairplay. Ha ha ha, bitch! Should that mean something to me? It, it, it does sound strangely familiar, actually. Bruce Fairplay, the witness testifying at this very moment. Oh, yes, of course. The banker. Why is his name in here? Ah, he borrowed 20 guineas, did he? And look, the repayment date is fast approaching. It's possible that this is just a coincidence, of course, but this could be very useful information. Ah, the details. Among the defendant's list of debtors is Bruce Fairplay, who would have been due to repay his loan imminently. And our guy was due to- the victim, not our guy. The victim was due to pay 20, pe 20 guineas, right? Like, the exact same amount? Interesting. I have evidence. Motive, bitch. My lord? Yes, counsel? Santa Claus? The defense is ready to present evidence. By Jove, are you sure? Yes, evidence that will clearly demonstrate why Mr. Fairplay had reason to lie in his testimony. Gah! Very well. I hereby call on the defense to present its evidence. Evidence that demonstrates a motive for the witness's alleged deception of the court. Ba 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 ba. Bang! Guilty. I need to take a drink really quick. Hold on. Oh, all right. All these voices hurt my throat a little bit. This is a list of the debtors who owe money to Mr. McGilded. Yes, a list of innocent victims crippled by the accused's extortion. The point is, Mr. Dude, calm down. Uh, among the names of these debtors is your name. Mr. Bruce Fairplay. Damn. What? Mr. Fairplay, are you currently indebted financially to the accused? Ah, no. Well, it's, it's barely worthy of being called a debt. According to this ledger, you owe 20 guineas. Not an inconsiderable sum of money, wouldn't you say? Ah! Well, well, what of it? Let's suppose Mr. McGilded were to be found guilty of murder. What would become of your debt in that case? Huh, these documents state that the loan agreement is forged between two individual parties. Therefore, were the creditor, the defendant here, to be sentenced to a capital punishment, all outstanding debts which were owed to him would be annulled. They would cease to exist. Cease to exist? That's a motive if I ever saw one. Mr. Fairplay, is it not the case that you claim to your testimony to have seen something you never in fact saw? In a devious attempt to annul your debt of 20 guineas to the defendant. Gah! Gah! He's gonna eat that thing. Kane, staff. Uh, order, order, order! Mr. Bruce Fairplay, you punk. Y yes my lord! What the hell? Let me ask you again. And be aware that your answer may have most serious implications upon your future, sir. Grr. Did you or did you not? See the precise moment in time at which the defendant is alleged to have thrust a knife into the victim. Bro, your silence speaks volumes. You did not tell the truth in your testimony. All right, now let's not make a melodrama out of this. Perhaps I did overstate the truth a pinch. A pinch? But it makes no difference. 
I definitely remember seeing blood on McGilded's hands. Both of them. Objection. Yeah, clearly. And yet, only one of the defendant's gloves, which we have here as evidence, is stained. Yeah. so you keep saying. Aw, oh, come on first. I, I wonder if I might be allowed to speak, sir. Go ahead, Mr. First. Well, the thing is, I think I remember seeing it myself as it happens. Seeing what? The blood, sir, on the assailant's hands. I think, uh, yes, I'm, I'm almost sure that it was on both of his hands, not just one. What? What? Yeah, but maybe it was someone else's hands. Why is this so, like, uh, such a big deal? You know what I mean? Hmm. It would appear that we're going to need further testimony from all you witnesses. This time, I would like to know precisely what you did and what you did not see. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Angry Santa mode activate. Y yar yes. What? Mr. Naruhodo. This is good news. The course of the trial seems to have shifted slightly at last. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. <clears throat> and I finally have a chance to turn things around here. Turn around. <laughs> All right, let's go. So either. Here are my two hypotheses at this point in time, not to bore you. One. Uh, either someone else stabbed him and they saw that person's gloves, which were very clearly, you know, obviously coded because they stabbed a man. And then they like put, or McGilded when he went to help the guy, just got the one hand dirty. You know what I mean? Or B, did I say one? I meant to say A. <laughs> two slash A. B, damn it. Two. Um, all these people owed a debt to that guy, to McGilded. So they're trying to frame him together. But that, that's my least likely suggestion at this point in time, because I feel like Mr. First is not evil. I mean, look at him. He looks like a nice guy, but then again, maybe he's trying to fool everybody. I don't know. Uh, Dahlia also looked like a nice girl in the other Phoenix Wright games. It turned out to be a demon in disguise with an umbrella. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Those are my two thoughts right now, but we'll see. Uh, what no witnesses really saw. There was blood on both hands of the assailant. I sincerely and distinctly remember that. However, uh, I suppose you might say that I didn't see the exact moment the stabbing transpired, if that matters. I remember seeing the knife, and, and I remember seeing both of the attacker's hands with blood on them. I, I didn't actually see anything myself, no, not until I heard the scream. Anyway, the fact remains. There can't have been anyone else inside the carriage, or we would have all seen. Ah. Uh... Yeah, put your hair back on, man. Well, uh, lo and behold, uh, in truth, the fact, not one of you was witness to the crucial moment the crime was perpetrated. I, I apologize, my lord, but, but honestly. Ah! There was no one else inside that carriage, and the man's hands were covered in blood. Gah, that much incriminating evidence is tantamount to saying we saw the man do it. That's really not what testimony is about. Let us examine the interior of the omnibus once more. Okay. The victim's fresh blood is clearly visible on their seat, corroborating the witness's accounts. Okay. In other words, there is no substantial nor significant change in the effects of their case. Hmm. Very well. Your cross-examination, please, counsel. Yes, my lord. So, uh, why is he saying there's no difference? Like, obviously they saw a ton of blood on someone's hands. Is he just saying that it was really on the seat and not on the hands? Like, I don't... I, you can't wash the blood out of the gloves that quickly. Like, you would wash all of it out. Plus, they took the gloves from him, I feel like. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there's blood on both hands of the assailant. I sincerely and distinctly remember that. Hold it. Clearly, no. No! The evidence tells us otherwise. We have the gloves the defendant was wearing on the night in question, the court record. I'm well aware of that, sir, but nevertheless, I know what I saw and I stand by it. The man had blood on both his hands. He's defiant even in the face of hard evidence. He's steadfastly refusing to admit that he might be mistaken about what he saw, but why? Your reasoning is dire. 
Huh? Well, nine they are too. The salient point remains unchanged. Minutes after the grim crime, the victim's blood dripped guiltily from the accused's fingers. Uh, uh. No input, your honor? All right. However, I suppose you might say I didn't see the exact moment the stabbing transpired, if that matters. Hold it. it does. Don't try to downplay this. Whether or not you saw the exact moment of the crime is a matter of fundamental importance, as well you know. Ah! But... For crying out loud, we all know that no one else could have possibly done it. I was just uh, trying to save us all some time. Yeah, you have a loan of 20 guineas outstanding with the defendant, do you not? Huh. Had you hoped to release yourself from that financial burden by ensuring the defendant was found guilty? I, well, ah! That's not entirely not what I was hoping for. Ah! I, I just lost a little guinea or ten when I was back the wrong horse in the derby, that was all. I was going to win it all back. There's a fixture this weekend, that's a sure thing. Ah, a little guinea or ten? I'm a banker. No one bats an eye if I borrow a little spending money for the weekend. Yeah, we're not here to talk about your gambling problem, bro. I think you may have revealed rather more about your character than you bargained for, sir. This witness's scruples are not in trial here. Proceed to the next witness. Is is that really how it's supposed to work? <laughs> I can find no man. I remember seeing the knife, and I remember seeing both of the attacker's hands with blood on them. Hold it! You definitely saw that too? Blood on both hands. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I know what you're going to say. Only one of Mr. McGilda's gloves has any sign of blood on it. That's right. The thing is, as far as I remember, sir, when I looked down and saw Mr. McGilda sitting beside the other fellow, I don't believe he was wearing any gloves, sir. He wasn't wearing these gloves? That's correct, sir. And I saw the blood on both his bare hands quite clearly. It's true that the dark colors seen on the dark leather gloves wouldn't have been easy to see. I should point out that the police officer who apprehended the accused on the night in question reported that there was no trace of blood on Mr. McGilded's gloved hands. There wasn't any blood on his hands. Hmm, this is puzzling indeed. This must be significant somehow, I'm sure of it. Ha, huh. I didn't actually see anything myself, not until I heard that scream. Hold it! You didn't see anything? Oh yes, sir. Uh, let's just say no, sir. I did it in. Oh, very sorry about what I said before, sir. Very sorry, yes. But it was very wrong of me to m make a story to say I saw him stab the man. Uh, wouldn't you agree, sir? Huh. I know what you're insinuating, but I certainly wasn't making up stories. Still, to say you saw nothing isn't right either, is it? No, 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 sir. I saw no, no, nothing at all. Mr. Bappo, you were driving your horses. At the very least, you, um, you must have enjoyed a good view of London streets, no? Uh, bro, why are you saying that? Oh, please. You didn't even see that? It was so cold that night, you see. It's all I could do to keep from passing out, sir. Yes, my head was fairly f frozen solid. Sorry to say, sir. It would seem prudent to avoid travel on the last omnibus service of London's cold winter nights. Yeah. Beppo! Ah! Alright, everyone, calm down. Anyway, the fact remains, there can't have been anyone else inside that carriage or we all would have seen. So, can I present this? Uh, like, I feel like it's the... Uh, the hidden compartment, right? No? Hold it! And everything you saw of the incident was through the skylight on the roof of the omnibus? That's right. It was fiercely cold that night, but the glass wasn't frosted over. Oh yes, I remember I was shivering. It was so bitter. Which rather begs the question of why the pair of you were sitting on the roof deck in the first place. 
Yeah, honestly. Well, I don't know about this young fellow, but I couldn't enter the cabin. Oh? Why not? It was locked from the inside. I tried knocking, but no one opened the door. It was locked? That's right, and it's a public bus service, for pity's sake. That's not what I call fair play. Ha, ah, that's your name. Yes, I had exactly the same experience. I tried knocking, but the gent inside just gestured at me to clear off. So I had no choice but to climb up to the roof deck and look down longingly into the warm cabin below. Well, I can assure you I wasn't just looking down. I was glaring, long and hard. And that's precisely why I can tell you with absolute confidence that if there was anyone else at all in that cabin, I would have noticed. Huh. Unequivocal, I would say. I'm not sure about these two witnesses. Could they really have seen everything inside the cabin through the skylight? Uh, they might not have been able to. Allow me to confirm one thing, Mr. Fairplay. You were riding this omnibus. And witness the events in the cabin through the skylight in the floor of the upper deck. Is that right? That's right, yes. In that case... There is a portion of the cabin interior that would have been out of sight from you. What? By golly, really? Obviously at this stage we can't say for sure. But the possibility cannot be denied. That at the time of the incident, there could have been another passenger in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Objection! Why couldn't there have been? Enough hypothetical meandering, my Nibonese friend. The prosecution demands that you substantiate your claims. After all, the scene of the crime is here, in the flesh. Why don't you sit on the roof and see, man? Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's demand. Okay. You will identify the area on this cross-sectional plan of the omnibus. Okay. Where exactly in the omnibus are you suggesting that this potential extra passenger could have been situated? Here? Right? No? I mean, if they were sitting here, how the heck are you gonna see this part? Right here, right? Take that! Both rows of seats on the roof face in the direction of travel. Whereas the seats in the enclosed cabin face each other. Which means... The visible part of the cabin, which passengers on the roof deck can see through the skylight, is as I've drawn here. Ah! That's right, my lord. As you can see, the seat opposite the one on which the victim and his attacker were sitting is obscured from view. Yeah, how is this news to anybody? In other words, if someone had been sitting on that seat, it's quite possible that these witnesses would have been completely unaware of it. Gah! Objection. Like, I thought about that like 20 minutes ago, man. It's quite possible some phantom was sitting there. You Nipponese have a forbidding habit of obscuring the truth with ambiguity. Yeah, well... I concur with the prosecution's rejoinder. In a British court of law, evidence is paramount. I cannot entertain this conjecture, counsel. That is, unless you're able to put a name to this mysterious passenger to whom you allude... Can you, Mr. Naruhoto? Uh... I honestly don't know. Who could it have been? Um... You know, that's a problem we'll save for next time. Sorry, my dinner just got here, so I want to eat it before it gets cold. Plus, we're at like 34 minutes, so we usually try to stop here. But, interesting. Do they expect me to know the name of the person in the car already? I don't know if I know one. I'll have to think about it, but uh, I think I'm going to go record the next one right after I eat, so it's not like I'm going to ponder this for hours. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really enjoying this case. It's interesting, um, but I feel like that part about the skylight not being able to see both seats was a little obvious. I don't know why it took so long to get to this point. But sometimes the people involved in the case are, like, for lack of better words, kind of stupid. No offense to them. But, like, I feel like most people would be like, huh. 
you can't see the other seat. Wouldn't they have known from where they were sitting that they couldn't see the other seat? They know what the inside of the omnibus looks like. So, whatever. And, like, they didn't say it was a locked room mystery, right? Like, how did they... Well, I guess McGilded would have unlocked the door for them when he discovered the body. I don't know. It's weird that the door was locked. So someone must have been hiding in there. Right? Maybe in the seat compartment, like I keep saying, I'm like bitter, like that's gotta be it. Anyways, so I'm gonna ramble forever. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, as always, feel free to leave a like, comment, favorite, or subscribe, whatever you guys are feeling. And until the next time, lights off, dark out.